In this week's Ask Kelly segment, a viewer asked me, in the 1950s, Pittsburghers would travel northeast by train to Brayburn, PA for vacations or a getaway weekend. There was a beach and a hotel for those travelers. What happened to this area? Well, Brayburn is a subcommunity of Lower Borough, Westmoreland County, if you're not familiar. I found the perfect historian to take us back for a look. Everybody had blankets laid out. You could walk out in the water uh, a, a tremendous distance and you were not above your waist. So. This is what Brayburn Beach used to look like. Even with stones for sand, people came in droves during the summer months to enjoy. It was very popular and you could see that the, the beaches were clean and it was, it was comfortable. There's pebbles and things and it drew a lot of people. It was very, very popular. Ray Reiser is a historian who lives in Lower Burl. He says this beach photo was taken in the 60s, but the draw to Brayburn as a destination happened much earlier than that. The Brayburn train station allowed people from Pittsburgh and beyond an easy way to make it there. And many came to work at Brayburn Steel, which opened in 1897 and still operates to this day. It was always a specialty steel company, so it produced um, things a lot of the other mills did not do, real high carbon steel. But this sub-community of Lower Burl is only a shadow of what it once was. The train station replaced by a storage yard, the hotel and pool hall gone, and that famous Brayburn Beach now grown over and littered with junk. So what happened? Well, Riser says the problem was threefold. It started in 1936 with the St. Patrick's Day flood. On the Natrona Heights side of Lock and Dam number four, the lock served as a steady barrier against the heavy rainfall. But on the Brayburn side, a small wing wall was no match and was easily breached by the incoming storm. When the flood came, the weak spot was on the Brayburn side. And, and, the, and the river blew through the, through the wing wall and it started to cut away a lot of the land in Brayburn. I mean, massive amounts of land. Much of the town was destroyed. The famous hotel, though, while covered in feet of mud, did survive and went on to thrive for three more decades until a fire caused its ultimate demise. At the same time, the coal mining and steel industry in Brayburn were on the decline. And there was no need to rebuild the hotel because the community just was not able to support it. With the hotel now gone and much of the town still trying to rebuild itself from the flood, the last tourist draw of the town, the beach, started to decline as well. Riser says it started attracting a bad crowd, which left behind trash, and slowly the families stopped coming. Still, lifelong residents of Brayburn carry very fond memories of their hometown. It, it was a, a little steel mill, coal mine town. It was a great place for kids to grow up. Everybody knew each other and everybody took care of each other. Now, as far as what could be next for Brayburn, Riser tells me it's going through a sort of a renaissance. He said builders have been going in, flipping homes to try to make them more modern, but unfortunately, no beach. If there's a question I can get answered for you, that's what I'm here for. You can leave me a voice message at the number on your screen, 412-244-4610. You can jump straight in, send me a video message. You can share that with me in a Facebook message or by emailing askkelly at hearst.com.